the new Starter Deck 15 reprinted Edward Newgate along with some new Whitebeard cards. But how good is it? Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. My name is Mobby, and today we're going to talk about my current Edward Newgate, aka the Whitebeard Pirates deck, and how it's going. So I think it's pretty cool. Let's talk about it. Make sure to like and subscribe for more deck profiles and duels as we go and do ST15 all the way to 20 this upcoming week. So, all right, let's get started talking about the leader and then we'll talk about all of the new cards going in. We'll, we'll go ahead and talk about all of them from 1 to 9 cost, the playstyle, etc. So this is uh, about 80% Whitebeard cards with some uh, red-haired Shanks, um, red-haired pirate OPO 9 cards which is very helpful for this deck archetype. So, beginning with the leader, this is the new reprint. This is OPO2, but obviously this is ST15. If you guys don't remember, it's, you know, Edward Newgate, Four Emperors, White Beard, 6,000 power, mono red. End of your turn, you add one card from the top of your life area to your hand, so you are on a timer with this character. So there's a lot of defensive cards in here and really big bodies that really make up this archetype. So you want to attack fast and you want to protect your guys as much as possible. That is the playstyle of this deck. You want to defeat them before they defeat you. I mean, obviously that makes sense, but let's talk about it. So we began with the searchers. This is the Ezos. Uh, so basically, Wano and Whitebeard. One, two, one on play, top five. You grab a Whitebeard, then the rest go to the bottom of your deck. So, really nice, cool utility card. And if you don't, if you are able to get this on turn one, I highly recommend it. And then, unfortunately, if you don't have a turn two, you there are some cards in here that is turn two. But if you don't, you can always have this be an attacker. And then you can always swing your Whitebeard in with the six. So, there you go. Because there's no other reason for the Ezo to be on the board. Next up, it's going to be our first of the 2Ks. So this is Thatch. This is a new card from ST15. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. On play, if your leader has white beard, you give up to one of your opponent's characters negative 2. Then put in the top card of your life into your hand. So you are self-hurting. And I don't recommend you ever use this for the effect. Unless you have a, uh, a, uh, a self-hurt negation card. And there is one in this deck. Otherwise, it's here as a white beard pirate, so you can search it for the 2k. Or if you really, really need the effect to use it at that time, go ahead. But I don't recommend it because you need every single turn. You need every single turn that you can with your leader. So they're here as a new way of just finding more 2ks. Next up, we have some Otamas, another one of our 2Ks here. This is not a white beard, not a searcher, but in this deck, there are 12 2K cards, with Thatch being four, Ot Otama being the other four, and then there's four more later on. So Wano, OPO1, 102. On play, give one of your opponent's characters negative 2,000. It's this effect, but of course, without having to self hurt. But this one actually is, uh, you know, pretty much free to use. So there you go. So there's four Otamas in here. All right, next up, we have some events. So these are radical beams. This is really going to help you stay alive. So counter your leader or up to one of your characters gains 2,000. Then if you have two or less life, gain an extra 2,000 to a total of four, which is very powerful. You're usually never, ever going to use this unless you have two or less life. And, and you're, gonna, you're primarily going to be holding onto all four uh, if you get them until the very end game where you can counter out of some really key battles to end the game next turn. Um, so the trigger is pretty good too. Your leader or up to one of your characters gains 1000 power during this turn. I mean, it's like whatever. It's really hard for that thing to have that much value, the trigger, but you really are. So, so it's not a searchable card, but it's very useful for the end game. Okay, so this is another new ST15 card. This is King Du. We're running four of these guys. So three, four, one blocker. The opponent's turn if this is KO'd by an effect. So KO'd. So if they attack into it, doesn't work. If they bottom deck it or trash it, it doesn't work. It has to be KO'd by an effect. For example, Rob Lucci or something. Then your leader gains 2,000 power during this turn. So if this ever goes off, your white beard is going to be 8,000 for the rest of the turn, which is very good. So this is good because it's a very cheap blocker. You have other white beard cards like Fosses and stuff that is also a really cheap blocker. It's also a two, um, a two cost, but this is a new one with a pretty decent effect. 
effect on the field. So we're running three, uh, sorry, four of these blockers. Really good. Next up, we have another blocker. I told you at the beginning of the video, this is a highly, highly defensive deck. You want to just make sure you live your last couple of turns so you can do the final damage. So this is Marco from OPO2. 451 blocker and on KO trash one card with white beard from your hand and this is 80% white beard. If you have two or less life card, play this card from your trash, rest it. So you usually want to use the effect, obviously when you have two or less life, but then you want to use it as a way to um, just stay alive more. So if your opponent is doing their final attack at your face, uh, when there's no other way for them to attack, you take the hit with Marco, then you just bring him back. There are some stuff you can trash here, so it's really good. So really good Marco cards, We're running a bunch of these. Next off, we have our last little bit of 2Ks here in the form of Jozu's. So Whitebeard Pirates, OPO2, 442, one Dawn Attach. If you have less than two life and your leader has Whitebeard, this character gains Rush. So you usually aren't, once again, going to need it to use as the Rush because you do have a lot of other good Rush cards in this deck. But if you need it, you're gonna need it, right? It's better to, better to have it here as a searcher and a effect that you might use every once in a while, very rarely, but it's always gonna be a 2K for you to use, so. These are your 2Ks, all 12 of them. You got your Automas, your Thatches, is a ton of 2K. You're going to be counting out like a maniac with this deck. Now for another new ST15 card. This is a really cool card for this deck. This is Atmos from Whitebeard. 451. When attacking, this is only if your leader is Edward Newgate. So it cannot be used with any other leader. You cannot add cards to your life using your own effects during this turn. So if you're able to get this as soon as you have the next life, because like your opponent really usually wants to just wait until you whittle down your own HP and then while you attack their face and get some good value. But if you're able to get one or two Atmoses out and they can't remove them every single turn and you have a lot of ways to defend it, you have the Radical Beams if you really need to, you have a lot of 2Ks, you have the blockers. You keep these guys on the field, your opponent's gonna get super annoyed. They're gonna try everything in their power to get rid of this. This is a very powerful card. Very early game as well. So running four of these Atmoses. Next off, we have another new blocker in the form of Silver's Rayleigh from OPO9. So it's Roger Pirates. It is not searchable by any Whitebeard stuff. A 561 blocker. Now, check this effect out. If your opponent has two or more characters with an original power of 5,000 or more, so it doesn't matter if you lower them or anything like that at the time, you draw two and discard one from your hand. Draw power in red is very, very rare. And this is just really good. It's a five, six, 6,000 blocker. It's a really good card. We're only running three of these because it's not searchable. And I, you know, I'd rather have a bunch of more searchable stuff like the Marcos, the King Dues, etc. But these are really fun. Three, uh, three inclusion tech choices that we got going on here. So these are all of your blockers. A lot of them, a lot of blockers. All right, next up for another attacker, we have Yasop, another OPO9 red-haired pirate card. 561, on play, your leader gains 1,000 power. So, yeah, that's right, until the end of your opponent's next turn. So you play Yasop, he doesn't really do much. However, your uh, Whitebeard will be 7 to attack into their face that turn, and then he'll be 7 for the defense, which is really good. Then if Yasop is able to stay on the board, you can attach 1 Dawn and then give somebody negative 1,000 power while you are attacking. So it's pretty cool that way. So I three of these. Now, we're going to be running three more of these new ace cards from ST15. Now, there's a lot of ST15 cards for this deck. 561, if your leader is Whitebeard, it has Rush. So you can put it in the other, you can put it in the ace deck, you can put it in the Marco deck, but it's really good in this deck. Then once per turn, if this character would be removed from play by one of your opponent's effects. Now, very rarely, it's going to proc on your own turn because they might have a trigger or something that messes with you but obviously when they use something like a Rob Lucci or even a Brook because it's not specifically KO'd it's just removed from effects which is really good so if they attack into it obviously KO still works but bottom decking or whatever it's awesome you may give this character negative 2,000 for the turn instead so he'll be 4,000 and then he can do more stuff and then the opponent can do more stuff into it but 
overall they have to waste more resources to get rid of this ace so it's really cool it's a good nice card and it also has um, a counter so there's not a lot of cards in here that are simply dead cards aka zero count zero cost counters that are honestly just bad in your hand I think I only have about six in here that are dead in your hand. This is supposed to be, you're supposed to be able to counter on most things. So these are your first rush cards that we're seeing. Very good cards. Next up, we have Ben Beckham, another OP09 card. This is from uh, Red Haired Pirates 771. On play, trash up to one of your opponent's characters with a power of 6,000 or less. So remember, this effect is not KO. It is trash. So you simply put it down and you don't activate any of their on KO effects or anything like that. So it's really good. And that's why you have a couple of things like Otama. And you have another thing like, uh, where's the other one at? Otama and Yasop, which lowers attack power. And they can just use this. It's a pretty good turn seven if you don't want to use these aces instead. So running three of these. So here's the other rush cards of your deck. And these are one of the, uh, one of the, the three of the six cards in this deck that have a zero cost counter. So this is Ace, White Beard, so searchable. Seven, seven, zero on play. Give up to two of your opponent's characters, negative 3,000. Then your leader is White Beard, Pirates. This gains rush, so nice 7K, 7K rush with lowering some stuff, which makes it so Ace can easily rush into them if he really needs to. Your White Beard, uh, White Beard can also attack into them and then you can go for different targets aka their face now we're also going to be running three as the last cards of the deck we're going to be running three white beards these are really good for your leader opo2 nine ten zero on play your leader gains two thousand so you will be eight thousand until the start of your next turn you cannot add life to your own hand using your own effects so at the beginning of the game you have at most for protecting your life Late game, you have this Edward Newgate for protecting your life. If possible, you never want to be at zero life because your opponent will have lots of ways to mitigate and go around your blockers. Um, you always want to have Radical Beam at the ready. So that's why you run this 9 cost because if you're at 10, 10 Dawn, you always have at least one extra Dawn to use that. Then if he survives next turn when attacking ko a 3000 power or less lots of ways to lower the cost so that's it for the deck guys it's pretty interesting i did some testing i actually ran a deck where it ran um let me just show you let me just pull this card out here so it was running a bunch of uh let's see where is it at it was running a bunch of uh white beard uh red haired shank stuff so uh, this is come on, we'll fight you. This is the top five and get a red haired pirates. At the moment, there are six red haired pirates in another deck I was running. There was 12 of them. There was four Yasops. There was four of the Ben Beckhams. And then there was four of the 10 drop Shanks. It has Rush. It's really powerful, but I don't think it runs really well in the white beard deck. Simply because I think you'd much rather rather drop these. And then you want more Whitebeard cards in general, so you can use it to trash for the Marco effect and the search for the Ezo. So this is the sort of compromise that I'm seeing here. Um, a lot of 2Ks, a uh, really good amount of Radical Beams, a shit ton, a shit ton of defense cards, especially this new one here. Not searchable, but if you can pull this off, you get some card advantage. And your early game Atmos really helps a lot. And the Yasop helps you live a little longer. Ace is rush and sticky. This thing is a really good attacker and a uh, really good removal. Your ace for removal and rushing and then your final white beard. So this deck is all about going quick, going fast. It's a simple deck. It's really nice and fun. That's it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.